In this video, we are going to quickly summarize the class from April 2nd. To do so, we're going to use this model equation that's shown. Uh, the coefficients are represented by the lowercase letters, and the chemical species that are present are represented by the uppercase letters. We're going to assume that all of these species in this equation are in the gas form. In equilibrium, what's occurring is that there are reactions occurring in both directions. So this arrow is different than what we are normally used to, which is the one-way arrow, meaning quantitative reaction. This reaction is no longer quantitative, meaning that there's going to be some reactants and products present at the same time once the reaction appears to have stopped. And so what this arrow means is equilibrium, in which the forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate. And so if we look at our equation, if we think of A as our example, for every molecule of A that we react or use up, another molecule of A is produced by the reaction of our products. And so what's going to happen is the concentration appears to be unchanging over time. We're going to look at the establishment of equilibrium using a graph to model. And on our y-axis will be the molar concentration, represented by square brackets. On our x-axis will be time. And in this graph, red is going to be the reactant concentration, so those are going to be our reactants. And blue is going to be our products. So at the beginning of any reaction, you have a high concentration of reactants and a low concentration of products. As you start the reaction, the concentration of reactants is going to start to decrease because you're using them up. At the same time, the concentration of products will start to increase because they're being produced. However, in an equilibrium reaction, over time, that change flattens for both the reactants and for the products. You'll notice that the reactants and products don't have the same concentration at equilibrium, but they have the same characteristic part on the graph, which is that their concentration is unchanging over time. We can look at a similar phenomenon with reaction rates instead. So on our y-axis now will be the rate of reaction, how quickly it occurs, versus time. And in red, we will have our forward reaction. And in blue, we will have our reverse reaction. So at the beginning of a reaction, similar to our concentration, uh, the reaction rate for our forward reaction will be high because there's a lot of reactants that are going to be able to collide and produce products. The reaction rate for our reverse reaction will be low because there's no products around to actually cause that reaction to go. As the reaction proceeds, we're going to be reducing the concentration of reactants, meaning fewer collisions between reactant molecules. That's going to reduce the rate of our forward reaction over time. Conversely, our reverse reaction we're producing products, meaning that the reverse reaction rate will increase as the concentration of products increases. In an equilibrium system, the two reaction rates will meet, and the rate of the reactions will stop changing. So at this point, we've reached equilibrium, and our forward rate is equal to our reverse reaction rate. Every equilibrium reaction can be described by something called an equilibrium constant. So we're going to use in our model reaction uh, where the lowercase letters represent the coefficients and the uppercase letters represent the chemical species. Uh, you'll notice that these are all gases and we'll go through some examples where that's not the case after. Our equilibrium constant is given by the letter K and you'll see it written for this outcome as either KEQ or KC. They mean the same thing. The equilibrium constant describes the relative amounts of reactants and products at equilibrium. For a given reaction, K is going to be constant unless the temperature is changed. KEQ is always the same basic formula. It is the product of the molar concentrations 
of the product divided by the product of the molar concentration of the reactants raised to their coefficients. So the coefficients become the exponents. We do not include pure substances, so solids and liquids, in this expression. The value of K can tell us really important things about the equilibrium. So if K is greater than 1, if you look at our expression, it means that we'll have more products than reactants at equilibrium, and we would call that a product-favored equilibrium. If k is less than 1, the denominator would be larger, meaning that we have more reactants, and that would be a reactant-favored equilibrium. We can use the equilibrium constant to calculate the relative concentrations of species at equilibrium, but to do so we often need something called an ice table. So ice stands for I-C-E, initial concentration, change in concentration, and finally, equilibrium concentration. So I'm going to write a model reaction here. So nitrogen gas plus three hydrogen gases combine to form two ammonia molecules, also gas phase. And we write the word I, C, E down the side. Now, often what you'll be given in an equilibrium problem is the initial concentrations of your reactants. So let's say we had one mole per liter of both of these reactants, and we didn't start with any product. Uh, we can uh, talk about the change of our concentrations in relative terms. Uh, to start out, we need to figure out the direction of change. So if we start only with reactants, and we don't have any product, the concentration here must go up to reach equilibrium, meaning the concentration of our reactants must go down. And so that means that the change is going to be negative for our reactants and positive for our products. If we don't know any other information, we can represent the change for the time being with the letter x. So we're going to represent the change for n as just x because there is a 1 in front of nitrogen. We're going to represent the change for hydrogen as 3x because there is a 3 in front of hydrogen, so it will change at 3 times the rate of nitrogen. And the change for ammonia will be 2x. Again, the coefficient is 2, so it will change at twice the rate of our nitrogen. So we could write our equilibrium concentrations in terms of x. So this would be 1 minus x, this would be 1 minus 3x, and this would be 2x. And we could plug those into our equilibrium expression. Okay, we're going to walk through an example that will first allow us to calculate the equilibrium constant and then to use an ice table to figure out concentration at equilibrium. So uh, the following reaction was studied at 200 degrees Celsius. That's important because if the temperature changes, so does the equilibrium constant. So 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and we have hydrogen plus iodine gas combining to form two hydrogen iodide gas molecules. In the flask, it was found that at equilibrium, the concentrations of hydrogen, iodine, and hydrogen iodide were 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.6 moles per liter, respectively, meaning hydrogen is 0.2, iodine is 0.3, and HI is 0.6. So first things first, we're going to determine the equilibrium constant at 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have our reaction, so we can write our equilibrium expression. So KEQ is going to equal the molar concentration of hydrogen iodide at equilibrium squared, because the coefficient is 2, times the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine. Their coefficients are 1, so they don't have any exponents. We can plug the values we had in the last question here. So we had 0.60 moles per liter of hydrogen iodide, 0 0.20 moles per liter hydrogen, and 0 0.30 moles per liter iodine. And our equilibrium constant comes out to be 6.0. Now the size of this equilibrium constant 
is above one. So our KEQ value is greater than one, meaning that this equilibrium position is product favored. We're gonna extend this example further now. So uh, hydrogen and iodine gas were introduced into an empty flask at 200 degrees Celsius. This 200 degrees Celsius is important because it's the same temperature as the previous example, meaning that we can carry the original K value forward. So in this, we know that our KEQ equals 6.0. So the initial concentration of each gas was 0.5. So we have an initial concentration, 0.5, and we're trying to determine the equilibrium concentration of HI. To accomplish this, we need to set up an ice table. So we're going to write our expression, our reaction at the top, make sure it's balanced, and then the words I, C, E down the side. We know that the initial concentration of hydrogen and iodine was 0.50, and the initial concentration of hydrogen iodide was zero. Now because we don't have any product present, we must increase the concentration of our products to get to equilibrium, and therefore decrease the concentration of our reactants. So the change of our reactants will be negative, the change of our products will be positive. We don't have any more information yet, so we're gonna have to use X. So the coefficient here is one, and the coefficient in front of hydrogen iodide is two. So it'll be negative X, for both hydrogen and iodine gas. And because of the coefficient two in front of HI, the change here will be twice as great, so it will be two X. Therefore, our equilibrium concentrations of hydrogen and iodide will be 0 0.50 minus X each. And the equilibrium concentration of HI will be two X. We're gonna take these numbers and plug them into our equilibrium expression. So our equilibrium expression, KEQ, is equal to hydrogen iodide squared over the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration oops, of iodine. Now we can plug in the numbers we have. So we know that KEQ equals 6.0, HI equals 2X, and that will be squared. And then because these are the same value. Instead of writing it twice, we can write 0 0.50 minus x squared. Now we need to get rid of that squared value so that we can solve for x. And the easiest way to do this is to take the square root of both sides. You shouldn't have to use the quadratic formula in this course. So the square root will cancel out both of these exponents. And we can rewrite this as 2.45, so I've rounded just for writing it, but I'm going to keep all the numbers in my calculator, is equal to 2x over 0 0.50 minus x. So I need to take this denominator, the 0.5 minus x, and I need to move that to this side of the equation. And so to do that, I'm going to take 2.45 times 0 0.5, and I get 1.22 minus 2.45x is equal to 2x. So I've just distributed that 2.45. Now I can rearrange, so 1.22 is equal to 4.45x. And then to solve for x, I just divide both sides by 4.45. And x is going to equal 0 0.28. That's not the end of the question though, because we were asked to find the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide, and the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide is 2x, not just x. So to fully solve this problem, the concentration of HI at equilibrium is equal to 2x, which is 0.55 moles per liter.